We'll certainly be having more on that. Uh, Chris Lems will be joining Beezink Live uh, to give us update from that meeting. But, I mean, the bottom line is quite there. Mr. Dangote said it. Uh, we do need, as Africans, to give ourselves access. Uh, we have the after. Uh, how is that working? Because of a lot of restrictions uh, by individual countries. It's time for us to bring down the barriers and uh, trade within uh, between ourselves. Uh, well, let's uh, move on to today's first conversation. And it is not far away from what we talked about uh, recently in Nigeria, the issue of FX and FX unification, FX rate unification has been a uh, top conversation. So uh, let's talk to someone who is directly impacted by this. His business is to help you uh, get FX. Uh, it's supposed to be. Well, we have our president of the Bureau of the Change Operators, uh, Mr. Aminu Gwadabe, uh, joins us virtually from Mina in Niger State to tell us how all of these changes have been affecting his operations. Mr. Gwadabe, thank you so much for your time. Good morning. Um, how, how is all these changes, the pronouncements of the president, CBN has spoken, now we have changes to domiciliary account. How is it affecting uh, your operation as a BDC? Uh, first, Thank you very much, and uh, we want to thank the President and the Central Bank of Nigeria for aligning with our advocacy. We have been calling for collapsing of various exchange rates in the market to ensure liquidity, transparency, and clearance market uh, rate. So it has now come, it's a bit late, and also it's going to be painful in the short round. However, in the long run, uh, it's better to take a decision it's better to take an action to make corrections of so many issues that are putting the foreign exchange uh, market into topsy topsy. Yes, like you said, there are a lot of changes. First, we start with a floating currency. A floating currency is a currency that uh, its value is being determined in the, uh, I mean, in the, by the market forces. That is demand and supply. So when the currency is being uh, floated is called a fluctuating currency. Then the other changes like you have rightly mentioned by the central bank in terms of willing buyer, willing seller, it only means that there must be a willing buyer, willing seller, and they are the ones to determine the rate themselves. It's not the central bank now that is pegging the exchange rate. So that's about willing buyer and willing seller. And it has happened even during Obasanjo, during Babangida, so it's not new. It's just how it's going to be implemented. Then also, all invisible transactions have to go through the IAE window. Invisible transactions, they are nothing more than the PTA, BTA, medical, school fees, subscription, and what have you. Then also, the collapse of the all segment of the market into one, like a kind of unified foreign exchange market, which was also introduced in uh 2016 2017 we have what we call a foreign exchange uh, i mean a single foreign exchange market however as an operator how does it affect you one is the inclusion if you look at it pta medical bees and personal traveling allowance these are urgent transactions of the public and they said it should still be met by the banks we are not competitors to the bank we are only complimentary because of our convenience. You cannot come to the airport at 2 a.m. and you see a bank that's open for you to change your dollar. So that makes us complimentary, not competitive. So these are urgent transactions that should be allowed by the bureau to change operators to carry on. Then also the removal of restrictions in the domiciliary account. This is also key for the SME to be sure, I mean, to get assets of foreign exchange to be able to meet up their demand. You see, the floating of the currency, local currency, has its own positive and negative impact. One, it will increase the efficiency. One, it will build foreign reserve. It will also create confidence in the market. And it will remove economic, uh, illegal economic behaviors that are ab initial, creating pressure on the NERA, like, uh, grafted funds purchasing the dollars because it's not the purchase of dollar that create volatility but the pursuance of grafted or an income on the fx market is what is causing the volatility so now there's no more room for rent seeking there's no more room for round tripping 
There is no more room for speculation. There is no more room for audit. So all this put together, we have to galvanize and strengthen liquidity in the market. However, it is important, like I said, to include the bureau of change. And another aspect that I've seen is missing in the changes. I know the CBN are thinking all the time to introduce policies that we galvanize liquidity because it's issue of liquidity. When the first subsidy was removed, we did not see it going. Government have uh, intended because it is everywhere. It is everywhere. So that is the approach that the central bank and this, I mean, and the federal government should take in ensuring that there's liquidity in the market. And the role of bureau de change is to bridge the liquidity in the market. For instance, we take care of urgent demand, like travelers, school fees, and also SME that have little demand for their spare part in computer. You know, those that are in small, small business, those are in uh, tailoring, they need their spare part, and what have you. So this is our most critical role. Mm. We serve the critical retail end of the market. We are most of the time, the volatility is perverse. So right. also, like I said, yeah, Mr. the Mr. Mr. Of restriction on domiciliary Mr. account is going to add to the liquidity in the market and ensure there is stability. It's not the value right. of the currency. All right, all right, Mr. Guadabe. Yeah, Mr. Guadabe, let, let, me, let me just ask you this. We do know that the former uh, CBN governor, or the embattled, mean, beg your pardon, CBN governor had announced uh, they had stopped the sale of uh, foreign exchange to BDCs. I think that was last year or so. so two years, two years. Two years two ago, years thank you so much for that. Right. So where was your source now? Uh, any hope of that uh, um, source that's the banks selling to you directly? Honestly, the, the, the current position of the bureau of change is even hopeless in terms of sourcing. All our hope was like, who can be included now that there is no any uh, issues surrounding the management of the exchange rate? Even before, most of our members heavily rely on the CBN window. Other sources that would have been available for the bureau change are restricted. I, as a bureau de change uh, license, CBN's license operator, I cannot be even a pickup agent of the diaspora remittances. This is a hanging fruit that we have always been calling on the CBN and the federal government to look into. Other countries like India, like China, they are leveraging. In fact, India receives nothing less than $30 billion annually for infrastructure with the, with the collaboration of their own bureau de change. So this is a hanging fruit. This is a source that if the, this, the, the Apex Bank and the federal government... All right, uh, seems... To uh, men injecting right. liquidity. So okay. that is one source. Because right now, we have no sources. Nigeria is not a tourist country. And our number, we are talking about about 5,000 members. So you see, it's difficult. Most of us have closed our shops. Most of us have sat. We employ nothing less than 20 to 30,000. We have a capitalization of over 350 billion in the economy. We, we do a lot to ensure that we serve our role. So we are advising on the Central Bank of Nigeria, the new government that is there, and even the, the, the presidency to look into we have been very, very vital in right. the economy. All right, Mr. No Mr. Wadabe. You can achieve price uh, stability, yeah, Mr. Uh, the, uh, liquidity in the market without the bureau change. All right, Mr. Wadabe, uh, you mentioned the issue of uh, uh, capital requirement. And we know last right. week the Policy Advisory Council advised President Tinubu to increase the capital requirement for BDCs. Just very briefly now, because we're out of time. Are you in support of this? And at what level do you think will make people have enough but people you, and the government have enough see, confidence cap, cap, in cap, 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 capitalization is a one minute question if you raise capital you did not solve the fundamental problems so what we advise is maybe a kind of consolidation that has had been happening in the other financial institutions like the banking microfinance so that will go a long way and profiling so it's just not to increase the capital and you think that you have solved the problem. Increase, right. the increase of capital is just a one-minute question. It does not solve the government and fundamental issues surrounding 
the management of foreign exchange or okay. the supervision of uh, uh, bureau the change operators in the country. All right, so Mr. Amin. We are okay Thank for reforms. Yeah. Thank and you, this Mr. Amin. be in Wadabe. terms of consolidation, <laughs> not of increase in capital. All Thank right. you for your time. All right. Thank you yeah. so much, President of Bureau of the Change Operators in Nigeria. Thank you for your time. And of course, this is an, um, an ongoing story. We'll certainly have you and speak to you anytime soon. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Bye. Let's take a break. When we come back, other conversations are lined just for you.